Good evening. It's yet another edition of The Big Story. Many thanks for joining us tonight. My name is Sharon Momani. Now tonight, a new survey has shown that Nairobi City County is the least performing of all the three city counties. Kisumu County, led by Governor Peter Anyang Nyongo, leads the park with an average score of 56%, which is a C+. Plus. And although Mombasa Governor Hassan Joho enjoys the privilege of incumbency, he comes in second with a plain C grade in the poll conducted by TIFA Research. Nairobi is a distant third with a score of 44%, which is a dismal D+. Plus. The poll was conducted between the 1st and 4th of May 2018, and 1,500 adults were interviewed in all the three counties. Governor Sonko has since dismissed the poll results. In an earlier interview here on The Big Story, Sonko attributed the current state of Nairobi to debt that he inherited from former Governor Ivan Skidero. That excuse by the city governor starts the show tonight. I'm not disappointing Nairobians, and I want to repeat myself, and I've been saying this all the time, that we inherited dead systems. Uh, the, the government inherited uh, uh, was a dead government, or is a dead government. What I can say, uh, the law is very clear, that for you to, 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 to spend any, any kind of budget, for you to procure any sort of uh, contracts, to get contractors to go to do roads or to do drainage, you have to follow uh, uh, the law. Sophie, if I can tell you, our first budget will start on uh, June maybe uh, after the, 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 this uh, uh, last quarter of the uh, previous financial year. And why I'm saying we inherited debt systems, the roads we are talking about here were supposed to have been fixed four or five years ago because my predecessor had a budget during the first financial year of 2.3 billion for doing roads. The second financial year he had a budget of 3 billion doing roads. He had another budget of 4 billion he had another budget of 2.75 billion for doing roads, but we've uh, uh, checked on the ground. There is nothing that was done by my predecessor's administration. So this blame cannot be put on me. So you remember that particular uh, interview that we had exclusively here on the uh, big story a few days ago, and it elicited a lot uh, of reactions from the public. And we want to pick up from now from that. And on the big story tonight, we shall seek to understand why the three cities cannot be at par, and especially why Nairobi is doing so badly. And for this conversation, I have a public finance analyst, Hezbon Omolo, live from Kisumu County. I also have the majority chief whip in Nairobi County, Assembly Chege Mwaura and his minority counterpart Peter M. Watok are here with me in studio. And uh, in the meantime, before we get into that conversation, we want to cross over to our lead reporter, Sophia Wanuna, uh, who is with the Nairobi City County Assembly Speaker uh, Beatrice Elachi. Good evening to you, Sophia. Good evening, Sharon. It's a D plus for Nairobi County uh, display of the dissatisfaction of the residents and as far as service delivery uh, is concerned, the various thematic areas that TIFA looked into uh, in this particular survey, interviewing 500 Nairobi residents, 500 in Kisumu County as well as 500 in Mombasa. For Nairobi, the least per uh, performing being the sewerage systems, this as well as Kisumu County. Uh, the biggest concern that the citizen had and the uh, residents of these two counties is sewerage systems, the drainage, the blockage, the filth, because of that heavy rain uh, downpour we've been witnessing that gets to just get back onto the streets. Uh, in Mombasa County, uh, lack of clean water uh, was uh, one of the highest uh, red flag we saw uh, ar around all the other thematic areas that the residents got to respond to. But I'm now joined, as you mentioned, Sharon, by the speaker Speaker of the Nairobi County Assembly, Beatrice Elachi. Thank you so much for making time for us. So, D plus for Nairobi County, you agree or not? Well, first of all, I'll want to look at uh, the questionnaire. So, I can't agree, I can't refuse. And as far as what you've seen, the rainfall, the flooding, the traffic jams, the piling of garbage, you name it, would you say it's a close to fair assessment? Well, I would say, first of all, I would wish we do not compare Nairobi County with Mombasa and Kisumu. Mm -hmm. Second, I would want to tell Nairobians, we woke up. 
and all of them, young people, women, decided their governor will be Governor Sonko, Mike Kibanguli. And after that, some of us expected, yes, it will take a while before you really get your foot in Nairobi to decide how you're going to clean it up. Because one, you're dealing with people who have been there, people who moved, remember, from the defunct county council to now the county governments. And, and that's why Kedero had the, all these problems. Now then, Governor Sonko comes in, finds the same problem, and we want to deal with this problem in eight months. I think even us, we are very ambitious. We will get angry, yes, which is OK for us to get angry, because that is when mm -hmm. we are put on the toes to work. But, I don't reject yeah. that. Yeah. But I, I want us now to go back. And for me, when we were voting in, we, th we believed that Jubilee having a governor in the city and the president is from Jubilee Party, it makes it easier because of the dynamics of Nairobi being the capital city carrying approximately six million people mm -hmm. will be easier for yeah. them to work closer and now to deal with the problems that they face. But Speaker, what I'm hearing you say, the transitional challenge continues, but it's been five years of devolution. For how long will we transit? And, and I'll tell you, if you look at the team, the first team that Kedero had was a team that came from the de facto county council. When he arrived in, he never removed this team. And therefore, they carried normal way of how they used to do their business. And it's, I, I think it's good now we start being honest with Nairobi. Nairobi has this challenge. I'll tell you today. If it is the workers, they are brothers, sisters, uncles working all together. And therefore, if they gang up as a team, they're a team. They wonder, how did we come to this thing called animal devolution, and how do we survive in it? So that is how they played on Kidder. The same thing, I know going forward in two years' time, because they are the county, I mean, they are the people in service. You will live as a political person, you will leave the structure. And the structure will reach in two years and realize, you're just about to leave. They always pull back. We have also laws. We want Sonko governor yes, to do all these things. But he has to follow the law. Now, Beatrice Zelati is here to tell, her, to tell him, kindly follow this. This is what the PFM Act says. You have to do your procurement within 90 days. We finished our elections in August. You want him to use the budget that Kidero had, you, had uh, indeed passed. It was his budget. So you come in and I tell him, we have a supplementary budget, yes, for you. You have to bring it. But remember, you cannot introduce any of uh, the law does not allow you to introduce any new projects. All Therefore, right. yeah. you have to deal with the projects that were for Kidero, mm -hmm. and you must pay the people that supplied during that time. It, it sounds like the last interview I had with him, he kept also pointing a finger back at the former governor, Kidero, talking about cartels. So it's uh, Nairobians eight months on blame games and looking back. When do we start moving forward? You've talked about a problem of the duplicity of roles, the former uh, structure of government and those employees still there. But at the end of the day, Nairobians want services. So when do we stop hearing these narratives and see work being done, in your view? I know by July, he will have his ground well. By July, he will have his estimated budget, yes. But we've also talked with the national government. Mm -hmm. I know they have sat down. We have agreements with the national government. There are a few roads we have taken back to Kura, which is good, because now Kura will await the rains to go down and will come in and do the roads they have agreed. But just remember also, at that time, the budgets will be closing. The year will be ending. Mm -hmm. you, you are not also allowed to spend according to the law. Just when the year is ending, there are those things you have put. We pay everyone through IFMIS, meaning you have to queue in into an internet banking, yeah. and that is how you pay someone. That process also is a very tedious process when you're paying different payments because you queue them in and you send your list to the control of budget. She announces this is what she releases. Mm -hmm. So the best we can help Nairobi, all of us, is first of all to ask ourselves, as we go into the end of this financial year, how do we ensure that the national government mm -hmm holds hands with Nairobi County and ensures they work together. Because well, they're already doing me, that to the regeneration uh, team, yes, the county. They are still now planning. Yeah. So we want to see what comes out of these meetings. Okay. We want to see that print that says in one year, by the end of this year, 
we must see results, decongestion has come in. We must see results, the 50,000 title deeds that the president is awaiting. We must see results, garbage is gone. All right. we, and I'm hoping we can just start with garbage and the roads, but also water, also which is water. very critical. So for me, I'll tell my governor, don't bog yourself in all these things. Pick thing only two time. things. Correct. And, and, and just do it the right way. Mm -hmm. You finalize, you pick the next one. Final question. You are speaker in the county assembly, Nairobi County. In terms of the assembly members, are they holding the executive, the county executive, to account? The critical issues Kenyans, uh, Nairobians in specific, are raising in this instance. Because again, that's where we see the passage of whether it's plans and policies by the executive. Are we having a vibrant assembly in Nairobi County? Absolutely vibrant. We finished our park uh, report. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting report. We brought in very good insights. If it is for taking people to jail, the best report to take people to jail. If it, it is the best report that can assist the governor to know, you don't need this institution, you don't need these people to collect for your revenue, you need to open up new uh, other revenue streams for yourselves to collect the right revenue that is getting lost in Nairobi, and many other things. That is the last one. We've given him our support fully for his, I think we are among the counties that now have finished, he has the full team of his CCs and the chief officers. We have gone forward, sat down together, did the CIDP, and I think the governor also is willing. You know, one of the things when you look at Governor Sonko, he is willing to see things move. And I know where his stress comes in, is that governor is wondering, why should you tell me we cannot just do this road? Because we come in and we tell him, no, the law says this. Mm. And it's really stressing him, these things of law of law. And so I'm, I also want to tell the technical team, mm -hmm. stop also stressing governor. Finish your paperwork, everything. The best you can do when you're working in the governor's office is to say, one, governor, we are ready for this and this. Are you up, do, do you approve? Because he doesn't need to sign. It is, he, he, he is guided by so many people. Right. And that's another challenge of him. Mm -hmm. If it is payment, he can say, fine, pay. But it will go through a process. Mm -hmm. The guy who's doing the payments, the guys who have the password, the guys who are supposed to queue it for payment. So if they okay. decide also to derail him, it is another issue. So in the new financial year, we'll start seeing things oh, moving. Absolutely. That's your word. Oh, yeah. that's a jubilee budget, even on my side. I have put it very clear. And I've told governor, put also all the workers on IFMIS. Let them be paid through IFMIS. That way, it's so easy to know the number of people you're paying. You'll feed out your ghost workers properly. Right. And you'll be able to know from the county to the sub-counties, to the ward, who are you paying? Who are you paying? Thank yeah. you very much. Thank Beatrice Elachi is the speaker of the Nairobi County Assembly. Sharon, back to you. Hey, thanks, Sophia Wanuna, our lead reporter there. And we shall be delving deeper into some of the issues that she has raised there uh, with the Nairobi County Assembly Speaker Beatrice Elachi with my guests here in studio. But before we get into that conversation, let's first look at some of the areas polled and how exactly each of these three uh, counties uh, performed in these different areas. And on average, um, Kisumu County Governor Professor Nyang Nyongo scores the highest uh, with Kisumu County on an average of 56%, which is a C plus. We see there Mombasa County coming second uh, with an average of 53%, which is a C plane. And a distant third is Nairobi County uh, coming, uh, scoring an average of 44%, which is a D plus. Let's now look at some of the areas uh, of service delivery that were polled in this particular survey. And I want to first start by looking at street lighting. And uh, interestingly, uh, that Nairobi County is the last in all of these areas that were polled. And we see that in street lighting, Kisumu County leads uh, with those people who um, you know, were, were interviewed in the sample uh, at Kisumu percent, giving street lighting 65% in terms of service, that particular service delivery. And Mombasa getting a 67% leading in that particular service. And Nairobi getting a 62% in terms of street lighting. And in clean water, Kisumu County is leading a Again, uh, is leading in this particular service delivery uh, with 61% and Nairobi County following at 43% and Mombasa uh, 
coming last at 39% in terms of clean water provision. And in terms of feeder roads, uh, we see that Mombasa County was voted the best in this particular service at 53%, uh, followed by Kisumu at 47%, and Nairobi. We have seen these complaints in the last uh, few weeks at 34% in terms of the state of feeder roads in Nairobi County. Let's also look at sewerage system. And overall, in all the areas that were polled, this really is what performed poor, poorest across the three counties. And Kisumu, uh, sewerage was given 44%, uh, Mombasa was given 43%, and Nairobi was given 31%. Uh, also, we have seen that, uh, you know, overall complaints about the state of environment in Nairobi in the last um, a few weeks. And in terms of food security, we see uh, that Kisumu County got 27,000. These are households that, you know, went to hungry in at least one day for the last uh, seven days. And in Kisumu, there are 27,000. And uh, in Mombasa, 26,000. And Nairobi, 112 households went to bed hungry uh, at least one severally in the last seven days. So, so those are just some of the areas that were polled by TIFA. And remember, this was conducted at the beginning of this month, the first week of May. Right, and of course, soon after this uh, poll was announced by TIFA, we saw the Nairobi uh, County Governor Sonko giving his remarks on the same. Let's listen into that. TIFA. We were ranked number last. We accept that position. But don't forget that this same TIFA, last year they conducted uh, another poll and they predicted that I'll never be the governor of Nairobi. All right, so we want to get into that studio interview now with uh, my guest here in studio as well as one joining me from Kisumu. I have Chege Maura, who is the majority chief whip and also the Ngara MCA. I also have with me here in studio Peter Mwatom, who is his minority counterpart. And joining us live from Kisumu City is Hezbon Omolo, who is a financial analyst. Many thanks, gentlemen, uh, for joining us. And I want to start having that conversation about Nairobi because unfortunately we have seen that it has stalled in all the areas that were polled in this particular survey. And I want to start with you, Chege Maura, who uh, being the majority chief whip in the county assembly. Well, Nairobi County generates the most revenue than all counties and also gets the most allocation from the uh, national uh, you know, government. So why is it performing the worst? Uh, first of all, I would want to, unlike the speaker who said she would not want to comment, directly comment and say that um, that report lacks the empirical support that would want to qualify it as something that can go and stand on uh, its two feet. Because first of all, Nairobi has uh, a, a population of over four million. Uh, Mombasa has just over a million, and Kisumu is getting to about a million. So if you do the sampling size and you put 500 each for the three cities, I think it's unfair. Secondly, um, if you now go again and poll on the issues of uh, food security, on the issues of wa uh, clean water, are we saying that, uh, that Kisumu now has a new Ndakaine, or have they come up, what is, what is making it become the number one when it comes to water? And what is making Nairobi become last with water? So those are the issues that we are looking at. Thirdly and most importantly is the rain conditions that we have. If you are going to look at the uh, sewerage system, and the sewerage system, the, Nairobi, the, the sewerage system in Nairobi cannot be comparable to the one in Kisumu and to the one in, uh, in uh, Mombasa. So much as um, we would want to criticize, I think it is uh, imbalanced in the first place. And I think we need to look at it in the sense that um, these are the parameters that we want to gauge. And this is the time that we've been, able, we've been given as a, as a county government. What have we been able to achieve? Are we saying that in the last six months, the Mombasa has put up the X number of lights, <coughs> vis-a-vis how many lights have been put up in Nairobi? On that basis, now we can now argue. But you cannot argue because you made a few calls to 500 people, half of them who decided that uh, the governor is doing, uh, they're not happy with the governor. Then you say, yeah, then you disqualify him on the basis of a phone call or on the basis of a, 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 a questionnaire. 
which, by the way, is important also as you are also giving us the report. You also tell us who funded the, the research in the first place, what were the terms of reference, yeah? And most importantly, what, what, what was the expected achievement of what your research was all about? So in terms of when you're, when you're giving an opinion poll about a vote, uh, who's, who you are going to vote for uh, in a general election is very different when you are giving a poll on a scorecard of a government that is in place. Because when you ask about a government that is in place, you need to ask all these other factors that make a government run or if, uh, not able to run. But when it's something that you want to say, am I going to vote for this person or yes, that is easy because it's somebody's vote and it's, it's going to happen within a specific day. But on, on, the, on the count of, um, of, of uh, issues uh, that are of service delivery, we also want to know what were the key indicating factors, key <coughs> indicator factors that will tell us this was what was expected vis-a-vis -vis this. And what kind of pressures do we have with a four million kind of uh, uh, population vis-a-vis uh, -vis a county that has a, million, a population of a million? Right. And Mr. Emotom, do you agree? Uh, what do you feel about this poll? Do you think it paints a clear picture, particularly in Nairobi, on the various areas that were polled on? Do you agree that it raises critical questions? Thank you. First of all, I must appreciate the pollsters to conduct this. If you see, they are very particular on the, on the cities of this country, Kisumu, Mombasa, and Nairobi. I want to agree with you and all the Nairobians, that this is a clear reflection of what it is in the ground. And more so, if you look at the three governors who have been polled upon on, there's only one governor who was serving the second term. If you see the first governor who has taken the lead on this poll, is a first term governor. This is Governor Nyang Nyong. It shows you clearly where governance prevails, the substance and the service delivery. The issue for polls to come into place is to substantiate the satisfaction of the electorates. It doesn't matter whether you poll 10,000 Nairobians and you poll 1,000 Kisumians and you poll 1,000 Mombasians. It's satisfaction to the citizens who woke up on 8th of August, very in the morning, to vote a particular governor based on his manifesto. I've never heard a young Nyongo saying Raguma didn't do this. That's why the sewer system in Kisumu is bad. I've never seen a young Nyongo saying Raguma didn't collect garbage in Kisumu. What he's doing in Kisumu is relocating the dam site. He's not saying, why did Raguma don't reloc did relocate this dam site? Anyang Nyong is fulfilling his manifesto in less than eight months. That's why, after pulling the three cities, mm -hmm. he's the first one. And Joe is a continuation of what he began. He's still second. But come to Nairobi, is the same cry. I'm seeing even my speaker saying, I don't understand which budget is Anyang Nyong using in Kisumu. I believe the budget cycle, according to the Public Finance Management Act, should begin on first of every financial year. I believe Anyang Nyong got a budget which was passed under Raguma on 30th of June prior to 8th of August. That's the same budget, that's the same budget allocation with the central government that Anyang Nyong is receiving to execute all this for the good people of Kisumu, vis-a-vis -vis the Nairobi County. As you well put it, Nairobi collects billions of money. You can see from the indicators. We've received from the central government 16.1 billion. And I hear people saying, the governor is not here spending the money. The question is, do we have this money safe somewhere? All right, all and right. what's this money doing there? It is not giving service delivery to the people of Nairobi. Let's, let's hear it from uh, Kisumu directly, uh, where we are joined by Hezbon uh, Omolo, who is a finance analyst from Kisumu. And from the poll, your county, Hezbon, seems to be doing very well in all these areas. Is it a co correct representation, really, on the ground? And if so, then what is working for the county of Kisumu? Thank you so much, uh, Sharon Romani. I think, uh, just like the other speakers have spoken, success has uh, very many lovers, and failure has uh, very few friends. And I'm not surprised that uh, the governor of Nairobi has a different view. I sit in the city of Kisumu and I can tell you for sure, if you talk to the residents of Kisumu, the poll is a true reflection of what Governor Nyongo is doing. And I could just mention but a few. The biggest problem we had when we elected the new governor was the issue of uh, sanitation. We had a huge gar garbage next to Kisumu Stadium. That garbage has largely been moved to a different site 
in a clear plan of action by the governor, and he's not stopping there. He has got a plan to take it to the next level. And I think what that tells us is leadership requires somebody with a bird's eye view. You must look at your county from that angle that you can be able to see what each and every small thing you're doing is able to plug into the overall policy plan you have as a county. And I want to say that uh, I'm not surprised that when it comes to matters of uh, sewage and uh, management of waste, Kisumu County seems to be doing very well. When it comes to issues of water, perhaps just a little bit of, of uh, background information. Kisumu City has, over the years, benefited from massive investment in uh, the infrastructure that supplies the water to the county. We have an upgraded uh, Dunga supply line. There's another one in a place called Kajulu. All these plug into our water system. So gradually, that has been able to improve the supply of water within the city. But above all, I think our biggest plot would be on uh, people going hungry without food for more than seven days, or right. as the poll suggests. I right. think that is true, but we are also unique in the sense that Kisumu County, unlike other counties we've mentioned, Nairobi is a county and a city at the same time. Okay. Mombasa is the same. Hezbollah. Kisumu is a city within a, a county. All right, and we'll talk particularly about those specific areas where uh, we had the, the polls being conducted around, uh, particularly on food security, which is, uh, appeared from that poll to be the biggest challenge for the county of Kisumu. But before we get into that, we want to take a short break here on the big story, but don't go too far. We want to get into the specifics of these areas when we return after this short break.